Okay, so we have a ton of great information that we're excited to share with you. And um, if you want to go back, as Sarah mentioned, and watch it later, um, we kind of think of this presentation not just um, as the title about the college application, but how do you get to the uh, part where you're sitting down filling out the college application. So students are on a journey from ninth through 12th grade and they kind of start as maybe a caterpillar and grow into a beautiful butterfly. Uh, and so we want to help them um, to get to where they want to be um, in that in that process. So yeah, housekeeping wise, um, the chat is the uh, the little text bubble that you can see at the top of your screen or for some of you might be on the bottom. So we are putting information in there as we go through. And if you have questions that you want to ask, um, we won't have time to turn the microphones on, but you can put chat uh, questions in the chat and we'll answer them. OK, and then the other members of um, our wonderful um, super counseling team at Bellevue High. As I mentioned, there, there I am um, with my alphabet. Next to me is Miss Robinson, and she's K E M through N G, um, and she is super creative. Um, and she made these capes and um, superhero costumes for Halloween for us last year. And then Sarah Menesberger is here um, with her alphabet. Next to her is um, Emily Clipper, and Emily is the end of the alphabet, so S, T through Z. And then on the far right there is um, Janelle Quintana, and she is at the beginning of the alphabet, so A through E, G. We have two wonderful counseling secretaries. You may have come across them um, by answering the phone or answering emails, reaching out to you. Um, that's Diane Campbell and Natalie Luttrell. They're fantastic. Um, lastly, Lisa Hansen, we'll talk more about her. She is our college and career advisor extraordinaire. Okay, so this evening, as I mentioned, we have a lot of different topics, right? But we want you to really focus on, it's not one day or one moment, right? It is about the journey, okay? So we wanna help you to help your kids during the four year kind of purple um, part of the presentation, which is the preparation. Preparation really for graduating from high school and whatever lies beyond the doors of Bellevue High. And then the, the second tier is kind of the, the upperclassmen um, time when students start to really research individual um, colleges or options for their future and start to build a list. And then the last um, chapter um, is the application part, which we'll talk to you about in detail, and that is in 12th grade. Okay, I'll turn it over to Sarah. All right, thank you. Um, so we're, we really want to kind of highlight the different things that you can be doing to prepare. Um, and really, this is kind of happening all throughout high school, like Ms. Smith was just saying. Um, so when you think about preparing for college and for college applications, it's really something that's happening um, throughout the whole time that your student is in high school. So thinking about the course selection, so registration sort of on our mind. We're going to start doing registration in about March time. So thinking about what classes your student maybe wants to take next year, thinking about the classes that they're in this year, making sure they're engaged and doing well. Um, with their classes, reaching out for help if they need it from their teachers, going to those asynchronous times in the afternoon, um, and thinking about just making sure their schedule is really appropriate for them. So we want students to be in a balanced schedule. So maybe not taking, you know, the hardest classes that are available in every single subject because we don't want them to have, you know, um, too much stress, be feeling overwhelmed, maybe their sleep's impacted, all of those things. So we really want them to be feeling more balanced. Um, and then, you know, if they're feeling overwhelmed, then their GPA might be going down as well their grades are kind of impacted by that. So we just want them to be thinking about um, just that overall picture. We always talk about balance when we give counseling presentations to students. I think all the courses that we offer at Bellevue High are wonderful. So when I think about college preparation, I really truly think that all the classes that we offer at Bellevue High um, are helping students prepare for college. And I've worked in, in a couple different schools um, where I wouldn't be able to say that that was the case. So I really do think that Bellevue High is preparing students for college with the rigorous cu curriculum that we do offer across the board. Also thinking about activities that students are involved in inside of school, outside of school, whether that's clubs, sports. I know things might look a little bit different in the virtual environment, um, but just a lot of things are still meeting. A lot of students are still finding ways to be engaged um, remotely during this time. So just finding ways to develop your interests. 
Um, there are some practice ACT, PSAT, different things that students can try out. We did do the PSAT for juniors a couple of weeks ago. I think it went pretty well. Um, many schools are kind of going more towards the test optional route right now, at least with all this, these um, considerations for the pandemic that we're all in. The tests have been pretty limited and I know they were canceled for many, many months. Um, so a lot of schools are kind of coming into this test optional um, format for, for college applications, but some schools will still require an ACT or an SAT test score. And there are some free practice materials that students can access um, through their Naviance account that we'll mention a little bit later. Visiting with college reps is a really nice way to just learn more information about colleges. This can happen at any time. Same thing with college fairs. Um, your essay that you'll you'll start working on that your junior year, your student will work with their junior English teacher to start on a draft of that, um, which can really kind of help if they feel like they already have a good essay going into their senior year that can definitely bring the stress level down a little bit. And something that you can be doing as a family um, is talking about your priorities, your goals, and your finances. I know sometimes that conversation might feel a little bit awkward, but it is important so that your student knows, um, you know, if there are some limitations or some parameters that are in place, um, you want to make sure that they know kind of um, what's out there and what's available to them. So just really having that honest conversation can be pretty powerful um, information for, for you all to have as a family to kind of collaborate and maybe get closer to being on the same page. So you might have different goals in um, mind for your child than they have um, that maybe that they're interested in so just kind of talking and exploring those things um, and kind of seeing if you can kind of eventually maybe come somewhere um, some common ground so some other things that you can be doing to prepare um, there's a lot of different pieces um, of this this thing called the high school and beyond plan and that's something that we talk to all students about so if you're a student here you've probably heard us mention this many times over the past couple of years the high school and beyond plan is a multiple different components that help you plan for your future these tasks are all also available in that naviance account your students naviance account if you have no idea what naviance is i would definitely encourage you to ask your student to show you their naviance account um, so we'll show you kind of how that students will log in at the end here but it's a really helpful powerful web tool that they can use to explore careers and colleges and they definitely will need to be using it their junior and senior year when they're actually doing their applications so some of the different pieces of the puzzle for this high school and beyond plan that are really helpful um, they are graduation requirements as well and i think that they're really helpful for students um, so i want to emphasize four of the pieces here tonight the career interest profiler is like a career personality test it's one of my favorites it can kind of help your students um, maybe if they don't know what they're what they might want to go into for a job or a career or a college major this can be a really nice way to explore that a little bit um, and it's kind of fun too just to see what comes up the four year course plan um, is more of a planning tool, so you're not it's not how they actually register for classes, but it is a nice tool to be thinking ahead like what classes do I want to take next year and the year after um, and kind of be planning um, those interest areas and thinking thinking ahead, which is helpful. A resume can be a really helpful tool as well if your student maybe is in 10th or 11th grade maybe they're looking for a part-time job or an internship or they just want to have um, all their interests and achievements in one document for when they are ready to do those college applications. It can be really helpful to have already. And Naviance has a tool you can help build a resume or you can build one like in Microsoft Word using one of their wonderful templates and then just upload it in Naviance as well, whichever one that your student prefers. And the game plan survey is a nice tool as well just to be thinking ahead. It kind of has some good questions that, that get your child thinking about um, college and kind of what, what they might be interested in. So I'm not going to read everything on this slide, but I just want to pull, put another plug in for Ms. Hansen, who is a wonderful, our wonderful college and career advisor, and she can help with all kinds of different pieces of this puzzle, um, help your student explore careers um, and college exploration. She's really wonderful at helping students build lists. Um, if your student feels like they maybe aren't quite sure of where they want to apply to college, um, she's really helpful at, at working with those. And she's the one who helps build those college admissions, um, those college representative visits with, with us at Bellevue High. So she really has that personal connection with those people. So it's a really nice person for you to kind of get to know. So I'm going to turn it back over to Ms. Smith um, to kind of finish us out on the prepare and lead us into the research portion. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ms. Manesh. So in terms of college visits, so Sarah mentioned like there's all sorts of ways that you can kind of visit a school nowadays. Um, you can drive through their campus if it's local. Um, and when school, when everything opens back up again, you can obviously go to the actual campus and try some of these things like 
actually going into the admission office, um, sitting in on a class is one of my favorites. Um, I've been to all sorts of colleges all across the country and, and really enjoyed some of the courses that I've sat in on. You can just kind of get a flavor for the type of student that they draw and the, the way that the professors interact with um, with the students. Um, but now you can get a lot of that information virtually. So I've seen some fantastic vir virtual tours um, and visits um, that students and parents can take advantage of um, and talking to um, students that are there, they'll talk to prospective students, faculty there um, as well. Um, so not everything on this list is accessible right now, but hopefully it will be uh, back to being accessible, accessible again real soon here. Okay, so next I want to talk to you guys about trying to um, figure out once you get into kind of end of 10th grade, beginning of junior year, how do you decide um, do I want to apply to college? Where do I want to go? Um, what would be a good college for me? And oftentimes um, when students are younger, they think about, well, what are the schools they know of? Like I've always heard about, you know, Stanford or Wazoo or Harvard or wherever, right? Um, and so those might be fantastic schools, but we like students to try to decide like they're going to be a consumer. They're going to be spending a lot of their time and a lot of their money at that university. So we want it to be a nice fit, right? Not just a good, good school, I put air quotes around that, but a good school um, for that particular student. So if you think of it as picking a college is much like picking a friend. So when you go through the halls of Bellevue High, um, you don't look around and say, who's the most popular student, right? And say, that's who I want to be my friend. Maybe, maybe you do, right? But you might find that person doesn't have a lot in common with you, right? And they don't um, kind of fit what you want in a, in a relationship with a, with a very close friend. So college is similar, right? Not just looking around for the, one, the names that everybody knows, but looking for schools that maybe aren't even as well known as um, Paul Siegert was mentioning in the keynote address tonight, but just doing some research and really trying to see um, what does that school offer? Um, what is their philosophy? What are their extracurricular activities? Um, what are the, the majors? Um, what, could I graduate in four years? Like all sorts of ways that you can look at the, the things that are really important to you, the substance of who you are as a person, and does that university most closely match um, who you are and, and who you want to become. Okay, next. All right, so this slide, um, I, I really like um, students to try to um, think of um, applying to schools in three different categories, right? So when you look at a school, you can say, well, that's a really good fit for me, but you also have to be thinking, would I get into that school? Do I have a good chance at getting in or a medium, moderate chance or really not a huge chance, right? And so we want to make sure that there's no student um, in the spring of senior year that only applied to schools that were um, highly unlikely they would be admitted. We're all about letting you, you know, kind of roll the dice and see if you can get in. But we want students to not just get in, but to be able to pay for those schools and have their families be able to afford it, right? So we tell kids, hey, let's look at your grade point average, the types of courses you took, the test scores, everything about you, and start to decide, would it be a safety college for you, a moderate or a reach? So a safety, I'll show you here in a minute how you find out if it's a safety. Um, there's statistics in Naviance that helps you just compare your data with that school's data. So we want at least one safety school for every uh, senior to apply to, kind of uh, three, four, five uh, moderates and a, a reach if they wish. Um, and again, the tools, I'll show you how to do, use the super match tool. Um, and how to compare um, some of the programs with things that you're interested in. Um, and then next, this is just more kind of questions that you could ask yourself in terms of what does the learning environment look like, feel like? Um, do I have any needs that I'll need some extra supports in terms of learning or maybe some health issues, some types of challenges that you might have? Would I feel supported there? 
Um, would they have resources um, that would make me feel really comfortable? Is the level of the courses, the rigor too high, just right, too hard? Um, and looking at that, looking at the living arrangements. Some students say, I want to live at home and that is fine. And others say, I definitely want to live in like small student housing and I want it to be themed where I'm living in a dorm or a small house with just lacrosse players, right? Or I would like to live in a giant um, dormitory or things like that. Or I want to live off campus. Um, picking the major, so some students are very um, clear about what they want to study in college, and many are not. They're like, hey, maybe business, I'm not really sure. I'm kind of open. Um, and so you look at universities to, to see where you are in that continuum. Do you need a school that offers a lot of different majors, or do you know, hey, I'm going to look at MIT because I'm really a tech kind of person, and I know 100% that's the route I'm going to go, right? And then you want to look at the retention rates and the graduation rates. So does that college retain their students? If a student goes to that university, do they stay there for the next few years or do they drop out after their freshman year? So it was very important to me as a parent that my, my own children picked colleges that were able to retain kids. They didn't drop out after a year because they couldn't afford it or that it was too hard or whatever. And were they able to graduate in four years? That was very important to me as a parent because I didn't, you know, I'm not Daddy Warbucks, so I didn't have unlimited money to say, oh, go to college for six years. Like I wanted them to finish in four years and um, and not make it more expensive. So that I think is the end of my section. I'll turn it back over to Sarah. All right, thank you. Um, so we think now about the actual application. What are some of the components that go into the application besides just, you know, putting in your name and your address and what school you go to and all those things. So some of the different pieces that we sort of mentioned before when we're thinking about preparing are listed up here on the screen. So including your essay. So colleges are all going to have one essay at least that you'll do. Many times you can use the same essay and submit it to multiple colleges. And a lot of colleges are asking for a second essay. So maybe that's called a supplemental essay. Maybe they're asking particularly about their school. So thank you for sending us the general essay and now we really want to know why do you want to come to our school? Or maybe they'll ask you a very specific prompt they want to know more about. Maybe like what was the uh, last book you read and why did you like it? Or you know what um, what does diversity mean to you? Or how are you going to bring diversity to our campus? Um, so different things like that that you might be asked to write about. So those are different essay prompts that you might get. Um, thinking about strength of curriculum, like I mentioned, you know, just making sure you're choosing your classes wisely and doing well in your classes when possible. Um, colleges will look at your grades across the board in college prep academic classes as well as in your elective classes as well. So extracurricular activities, so like we mentioned, clubs, um, sports. So colleges want to know that your student, when they get to campus, they're not just going to kind of sit around and not contribute to the community, right? That's why those extracurriculars are important because it shows the college that you're involved and you're going to make their community um, kind of better, right? You're going to be involved in their community. So that's why it's another, another way to think about why, why it's important to, to do these things. Um, we talked a little bit about test scores, so many schools are going more test optional, but some schools might still require an SAT or ACT score. Teacher letters of recommendation. So most colleges will want two, not all colleges, but many colleges will want two letters of recommendation. Some only want one, um, but two is kind of a nice safe number if you're, you're not sure maybe where you want to apply. Um, junior year is a nice time to be asking two of your teachers um, to write letters of recommendation for you. And all teachers will have a different process that they might have you go through um, for them to write you a letter. It's a good time to be thinking about it your junior year. There's also a counselor letter of recommendation, and there's some different processes that we ask students to fill out in their junior year so we can write you a really strong letter of recommendation. So we do get to brag about you, which is great. Um, students demonstrated interest, so colleges want to know that you want to go there, that it's not just a random school you picked off of a list you have no idea about, but that you actually want to go. So maybe you've um, visited campus, gone on a virtual tour, or met with the college admissions um, representative to learn more about um, what they have to offer. So it's important to show um, demonstrated interest when you can. AP test scores, um, interviews, some colleges do interviews. It's not as common as it used to be. Um, and then class rank is a common question we get, but we actually don't do class rank. So we don't have that data available. We don't send it to colleges. We do send them a document that tells them about our school, and it does include a statement saying that we just don't rank. So your student won't be penalized for that. It's just not something that we do. 
So here is an application timeline so that you can kind of get an idea of when this is all happening. So you're preparing all throughout high school, like we mentioned, but then senior year fall is really when things are starting to kind of kind of actually be happening, right? So we have senior guidance pretty much like the second week of school. We go into senior classrooms and make sure that they are hearing information about how to do their college applications. We also meet with students one on one in senior blitz where we kind of help them and make sure that we know where they're applying, what they're thinking and what they need in that process. We also um, help them with um, lots of different pieces. We have different workshops. Ms. Hansen has amazing workshops, essay writing help, different things like that, application help. So kind of keep your eyes and ears out for that to your senior year. And then the FAFSA and WAFSA, this is something that you're going to be doing around October is when it opens up. So this is the financial aid application. You do one or the other, kind of depending on um, your citizenship status and different pieces. So the FAFSA is basically the free application for federal student aid. So it's really helpful to be filling this out. So this is something that your family is going to be working on um, together. It's not something that the student can do by themselves, likely, because they are there are some different tax pieces that you might need to dig out and fill out um, there. And it can really help them see if they qualify for any financial aid. So it's pretty important to be filling that out on the early end um, before the aid is all kind of given away. So very helpful. Um, so early decision and early action applications is very popular um, for our students to be applying early uh, these early deadlines. It's not required, but a lot of our students in our school and in our community choose to do that. And there are some advantages. Um, one of the advantages is you get to know sooner. Um, so if you apply um, the earlier deadlines, they'll let you know earlier so you can kind of have that stress um, out of the way, right? So some students like to do that, but it's not required. So November 1st and November 15th are sort of these early application deadlines. So just to kind of give you an idea, benchmark of when these things are happening. University of Washington, Seattle is a very popular school for our students to apply to. It's wonderful. It's close by and their, their deadline is November 15th and that's just their regular deadline, November 15th. So they just happen to have um, a deadline that is pretty early in the, in the school year. Um, so just kind of having that date around your head can be helpful. So then in the spring, Spring, um, oh, and then the regular decision deadlines, those are usually like December or January, so a little bit later. In the spring is when colleges will let you know if you've been admitted, so you kind of start to be planning where you want to go. And then May 1st is the day that you're going to commit and say, this is where I'm going to go to school, pay your deposit, save your seat in that class. Um, so that's sort of like a, in a nutshell, kind of boil down, simplify a quick timeline of when these things are happening. So we mentioned a couple of times just like the strength of your curriculum, um, making sure you're taking rigorous courses, but balancing yourself and not pushing yourself too much. Um, so everything that you do in high school will be on your high school transcript. So every class that you've ever taken, even if you retake a class, we have to show that you did it twice. The second grade will be the one that goes into your GPA, but both grades will show up there. Um, you can pull up some classes from middle school if you're interested in doing this. There's some paperwork for that if you had some high school classes in the middle school and some one of our district middle schools. There's also some world language tests that you can take if you speak another language. We have a world language test in every language, so you can get up to four credits on your high school transcript just for speaking another language, which is pretty cool if it's something that you're already doing. Um, and you can view your transcript in student view. So here's some tips. I know Ms. Smith put it in the chat and she'll go over this um, and take us through the next couple of slides. All right. So um, this is just kind of a, a sweet little list of some of the things that we talked about in terms of ways that families um, can encourage their students. And I see that there's quite a few students here with us tonight, so you can kind of see where you are on this continuum too. And, things that you could be focusing on in ninth and 10th grade, like community service, some of the college um, and career um, tools and testing, and then things to focus on, like the actual application and college list as junior and senior. And next, we have um, some information about Naviance. So in the chat, I put the two different ways that students can log into Naviance. The easiest way is just logging in um, by clicking on the desktop icon and clicking on Clever, um, but they can load from the internet as well. So a few cool things I'd like to point out in terms of um, tools on Naviance, if we can click to the next slide. Um, so when, you, when a student gets to the home page here, it says welcome and then whatever their name is. And across the top are some of the navigation um, tabs that they can click on. They're also usually located in other ways throughout the home screen too. Um, one uh, part of the homepage that every student would want to be aware of is the purple box at the bottom. 
And in tiny print there, it says X2 vol, and that means time to volunteer. So that's where students can log their community service hours um, for graduation purposes. Um, great tools here, uh, free SAT and ACT prep, um, other resources and um, scholarship links and all sorts of stuff. So that's kind of a, uh, the overview. And then here's a few more tabs. Um, I'm going to show you some ways to search for colleges, how to decide if the college is the right match for you by looking at scattergrams, different aspects of the application, the letters of recommendation, um, scholarships, et cetera, et cetera. And then, so that super match that I was talking about, um, you could spend uh, five minutes or an hour and, um, and come up with all sorts of cool things. So um, I don't know if you can read that, but there's some different search um, criteria. So um, you may say, hey, the thing that's most important to me as a student is geography. Like, I want to go somewhere where I can ski or I want to go somewhere where it's sunny. But they could also say, but I also have other criteria. Like, I really want a big school or I want a school that has a Greek system or I want, I really need them to have like D1, uh, Division One, a soccer team. Um, or I want them to have a certain religious um, affiliation, or I want them to be private or public or whatever uh, trips your trigger, right? So you can put in this criterion, kind of push a button, roll the dice, and then on the next slide, I'll show you what it looks like um, once you submit it. So this is a sample student and put in some criterion, and then it shows a list of schools there. So in the far left column, is the name of some of the schools that came up based on the search criterion and the second column is the fit score so fit score so for the first one there um you'd say 100 percent. it doesn't mean that it's a hundred percent match a safety school for that student it means that it's a hundred percent match for the criterion that a student put into that super match it's in California, it's private, and it has biomedical engineering, right? Whatever their criterion was. And then in the third column, this is about the actual um, safety, moderate, or reach criterion. So it compares the student, and then it compares the averages for that college. So then you can also add, you can just click a button and add that college um, to your Naviance account as a school I'm thinking about or a school I want to apply to. So pretty cool. And then I want to show you quickly um, the scattergrams. So scattergrams for those of you um, that took statistics is just a basic plot diagram. So it looks like a it looks at a five year study of Bellevue High School students and says, say for this sample student here, um, looking at Western Washington. Over the last five years, how many students apply to Western? So it tells you each of those three years, like uh, 138 kids applied, how many were admitted, and then how many went to that, um, went to Western. And then on the plot diagram, it shows the average SAT and the um, GPA and plots it on a diagram and plots the student who's in Naviance on that, um, on that plot diagram. So again, a way of just looking at data and deciding is this the right fit would it be a safety school would it be a moderate so i don't know i'm fascinated with this but uh, then now you can see on this slide not as much green it's almost all red this is stanford right and so it shows not as many students applied there right the numbers are much smaller than at western and then it shows of the say 51 that applied, you know, only a couple got in and then maybe a couple um, actually went there, right? And so you can look at the data right in your own backyard, uh, Bellevue High students. So it, for our PowerPoint itself, this is a district PowerPoint. So it is um, showing, uh, actually, I think it shows Newport's information, but if you and your um, son or daughter log in and advance, it will show Bellevue High data, okay? And then um, there, as I mentioned, every kind of scholarship and ways to get money and financial aid and all that is in there too. And I think we might be at the end here. Um, so we just have a couple minutes left and we wanted to let you know some coming attractions. So in March, we will start doing presentations for every grade level. Um, so you're in ninth grade, what classes do 10th graders take? What choices do you have? 
um, all of that. And then um, each student will be given the uh, registration materials. Um, they'll show it to their parents, sign off on it. We'll help them to register for the class. And then they'll also meet with their counselor for a one-on-one -on -one meeting. Um, and the juniors will have a more extensive one-on-one -on -one meeting. We call that the junior blitz. So they'll meet one-on-one -on -one for a longer period of time in March. And then they will meet with their counselor again in the fall. We call it senior blitz. And the, uh, that's where we'll be talking about not just picking their classes, but uh, planning their life and college and all that. Um, and in May, we'll do our final junior college presentation. So we did one in um, in January. So if you or your student missed it, we've got it in our Teams um, link and you can go and watch that anytime. Um, we did all sorts of cool activities with the kids and we'll be doing a final um, lesson similar to that kind of building on that, talking about letters of rec in May. And then before we let you go, um, I, I'm sure you saw the survey link in the other presentations, but if you don't mind going into the chat and clicking on that link, that gives great feedback um, for the school district about um, what was helpful in this presentation, um, what was helpful in, over the whole evening, um, and kind of like a Yelp review um, in terms of um, Sarah and I, just kidding, um, so that we can um, maybe tweak our presentation for next year. But we really, really just want to say thank you for hanging in there. We know it's 8.30 on a Wednesday night and it's been a long day, um, but we appreciate that you came and hopefully um, you learned a lot about, um, if you're a student or a parent, about the whole journey, you know, from ninth grade to 12th grade and beyond. And um, we just want to say thank you. And hopefully it's, we're not going to get too much snow, but I'm looking forward to a little bit of snow. So. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you for coming and remember the session and all the sessions tonight are going to be recorded. I know there were some great offerings. So if you weren't able to get to all the sessions you're interested in, please um, visit back um, and, and check them out later. So Thank you so much and I hope you all have a nice safe evening. Have a great night. Bye bye.